Hey guys, what I would like to do in this video is talk about the Garmin 4Runner 945 and this is the box and this is the watch and it's been on my wrist for about 7 weeks now. 7 weeks ago I did an unboxing and then about a week later I did a features video where I showed you the watch and I showed you all the, you know, how it works, I showed you all the buttons etc. It's about 30 minutes long that video. So I guess in some respects you can call my previous video the full review if if you want to know how it all works etc. And I did, you know, talk about what I liked and what I didn't like. Um, but what I would like to do in this video is kind of tie up my thoughts uh, and kind of go over again what I like, what I don't like. And perhaps more importantly for a lot of people, um, talk about whether this is the right watch for you because you know there's a lot of people that, that they're maybe not sure if this is the right watch for them. And I don't want to go out there and make a judgement call for anyone. You you do have to do your own research and look at the alternatives out there. But I'll give you my thoughts on this and I'll talk about the features etc. Uh, I'll talk about whether this is for you if you don't have a watch, whether you're looking for a triathlon watch etc. Um, and yeah, just kind of tie up my thoughts. I will say, you know, right off the bat, I love this watch. I really do love this watch. I had the Garmin 4Runner 935 for two years. I absolutely loved it. Used it every single day for two years and I love it. I love the information it gives me as far as sleep. Um, you know, it gave me sleep, calories, you know, steps, all my running, all my swimming, it gave me everything. And the 945, in many ways, just as a Garmin 4Runner 935 sequel, as a 935 Part 2, Mark 2, whatever you want to call it. This really should have just been branded a 935 Mark II because it's the same design, same strap, same button layout, same menu system. They have improved in a number of areas and I will talk about that but, you know, they've got a better screen. The buttons, I think they've actually went backwards with the buttons but the, the screen's a little bit better and there's a lot more metrics that are being tracked etc. But, for the most part, this is a 935 with extra features. Um, so before I talk about features and all that, you know, the extra features that are on here, which you can see in the back of the box, as far as Garmin P and all that, um, I want to talk about whether this is the right uh, the right watch for you. And it's hard to answer that because I think it does depend on what you're looking for. You know, there's people out there that just want to do the odd run and they, maybe they'll prefer like an Apple iWatch or a Samsung uh, smartwatch or something like that. I like the Garmin system. I like the the their apps. I like the Connect IQ app, and I'll, I just I'm just kind of tied into their ecosystem. I like how they handle things. So if you are talking about a Garmin watch and you want the best Garmin watch out there, the one that tracks you know everything, a multi sport watch, then you're really talking about the Garmin 945, the Garmin 935, the older version, or the Phoenix 5 Plus which is, you know, the newest one. But if money is no object, you want a new watch, you're talking about the Phoenix 5 Plus or the Garmin uh, 945. Now retail, this is £520. The Garmin 5 Plus is like £570, but you can get discounts if you go to certain stores. You're still talking about £500 or so in the UK. If you import from China from a website such as eGlobal, etc., um, you might save about £100, but then, you know, you you might lose out in the warranty and things like that, so that's something to take into account. The the Phoenix 5 Plus, it's got a few different sizes and all that, and, you know, both of those watches, is very hard uh, to distinguish between them. They share most of the same features. I went for the 945, the same reason I went for the 935 over the previous uh, Phoenix 5, and the reason being that this is a smaller watch. It's, it's more slimline, and if I'm running, if I'm going to the gym, if I'm doing anything, I just wanted a watch that wasn't as big on my wrist. And I think that decision perhaps came from the fact that I used to have the Garmin Phoenix 1, which was massive. It was <laughs> an absolute brick of a watch. But um, I like the kind of slimline uh, look of this. If you're unsure about whether you go for the 945 or the Phoenix 5 Plus, and again, if money is no object, go into a sports shop, go into a running shop and try them on. See for yourself. Um, functionality wise, you know, they, they share more in common than they have uh, differences. Um, now, the next uh, scenario I would say, or the next type of person would be someone who doesn't have a watch, but maybe they don't need the multi-sport activities. If you are predominantly a runner, then I, I wouldn't go for this. I would save some money and go for something like the 4Runner 245, 245 Music, or the 4Runner 
645 or 645 music and you know retail 645 is like 300 or so and then you're about 250 for the 245 fantastic watches same menu system same you know same way that you navigate the app same watch faces you get a lot of the same apps that you can use as well you're just not going to get some of the extra functionality like maps and you know swimming and cycling and different things like that so yeah i would save money if, if you're if you're just a runner and you don't need all those extra apps save yourself some money you know and you could put that towards your next watch or put it to, towards something else the big the bigger question really comes um if you already have something like a 935 or another sports watch and certainly if you're coming like the 935 from me you know, like me um i think it's it, it's it's a, a more of a difficult question so I'll, I'll, I'll address that now and look at the features um if you look at the back now the box is just going to tell you the main features check the website obviously to see a full list of all the extra features here but um, you can see some of them here it's got watch mode two weeks size 47 millimeters 10 hours gps plus music mode so if you're using music you've got 10 hours while running weight 50 grams but you can see some of the features at the back here it's got music garmin p training status and the other two maps and safety and tracking so I'll just kind of touch upon some of these. Uh, the map feature is pretty cool. It, it works really well. And if you're out doing hill walking or you're doing anything, you can use this for navigation and you can do different things like that. Is it worth buying for? Personally, no, because I always have my watch, uh, my my phone with me, and I'm always going to use the phone because it's a bigger screen and it's just easier to use. But if you're out and about, if you're running and you need to use the map, I think it is quite a cool feature. As far as the tracking goes, I think this is an area where they have really, really improved. Um, and I talked about this in the previous video. Again, I don't want to go over too much that I did in the last video, but when when you finish your, your workout now, when you finish your run or your swim or whatever, it gives you a ton of information. Now, it really does show you a, a ton of information. And previously, Previously, with the 935, most of that information you had to go to the app to get. But now you can go into your watch at any point and you can check your last um, your last activity and you can see everything from calories, you can see all the VO2 max, all, all your different training things. And there's all these ad additional um, tracking information and metrics that you didn't get in the 935. So if you've got the 935 and you feel that you want more stats, you want more metrics, you want more things to be, you know, to be recorded... I would say that the 945 is something to look at. It does improve it in, in, in stats and metrics and all that. It does improve in that area. Again, it's not night and day. It's just a couple of extra things, just a few extra things that are tracked, just a few extra screens. But if you're using the 935 and you jump to the 945 and you're doing runs, you will notice that extra information is there. Um, and you know it's got here as well training status this is another thing where it tells you you know this was in the 935 as well where it tracked um, you know it, it would say something like don't train for two days this is another area they've improved upon this as well and the, it's just more more uh, more things have been recorded so that it's a clearer picture I guess that's the best way to look at it they've got a clearer picture as to where you are so maybe after a run it will say don't train for two days, you know, you, you need to rest and things like that. So they're making strides with things like that. As far as the GPS goes, I found that it, it's, it's getting picked up a little bit better. But again, I never had a problem with the 935. I never thought the 935 was bad as far as, you know, catching a signal for GPS. Um, you know, with my old Phoenix, I'd sometimes be sitting up looking at the sky trying to get a signal. The 935 was quick, this is slightly quicker. One of the things that a lot of people pointed out was battery life wasn't as good and it's hard to tell. I don't think it is that, that much worse. I really don't think it is. I think battery life continues to be good. I always thought battery life was really good. And if you're not running, if you're not training uh, any activities and you're not you know doing anything, it says here that you get two weeks in watch mode. Realistically, you're going to get a week, maybe you know eight, eight or nine days if you're not using GPS or tracking anything. And for a watch, a smartwatch, that's pretty good. You know, the smartwatches out there, you have to charge every single day. So I think in that respect, um, yeah, battery life, I've not had a problem with it. Maybe other people will disagree with me, but I've not had a problem with it. Um, Built-in features of training, swim, bike, run, plan, barometer, all those things were in the 935 as well. Um, music and Garmin P. Right, so music and Garmin P, which is kind of noted in the back here. 
these are two of the features, two of the main features that I, you know, kind of notice when coming up from the 935. Now, Garmin Pay is an excellent idea. It's just very poorly implemented. So the idea is, you know, near field communication that, you know, you go somewhere and you're out and about, you need to buy a bottle of water, you go over and you beep it and it will, you know, do the transaction it will, and it will, um, you can buy something with it. Sounds good in practice. Now, I don't know what it's like for the rest of the world, but here in the UK, it is, again, poorly implemented. If I look at it for Visa, it says that the only options are Corner Card or Santander. Santander, and for MasterCard, you've got Santander as well, Danske Bank, uh, Danske Bank, Starling Bank, and Boon. So there's like, there's like five or six banks, or five banks or so. So, basically, I know Santander is a big bank in the UK, but none of the other major, you know, mainstream banks in the UK are supported. So if you do want to use Garmin P, I'm not sure how well it works because my banks, the banks that I use, I've got a couple of bank accounts. None of them are supported by that. And over the last two months, they haven't added any additional banks. So basically, if you want to use Garmin P, you actually have to have one of those bank accounts with one of those companies, one of those banks, or you need to go out and open an account with one of these banks. And again, it's a good, a good feature, but I think it's a feature where they really should have implemented it more. They really should have developed more partnerships with more banks in order, um, you know, in order to support that feature more. As it stands, Santander is a big bank, but most mainstream UK banks, i.e. Halifax, Bank of Scotland, Royal Bank, of Scotland, all these kind of mainstream banks in the UK, they're not supported. And I think that is a major problem. That's something they have to address. The, the tech uh, the technology is there, the features are there inside the watch. They need to get the software side of it right for Garmin P. So maybe Garmin P is amazing. Maybe it's the best feature of this watch. Maybe this is why you want to upgrade. I don't know. I really can't sit here and say it's a great feature or it's a terrible feature because I've not been able, not been able to use it. And quite frankly, it's not important enough to me to go out and open a new bank account. It really isn't. I'm not going to use it that much, if I'm honest. But if it is important important to you, make sure you are willing to open up a new bank account if it's not supported. You can check the Garmin website to check which banks are supported. Maybe it is better in your country if you're not watching the UK. Maybe it's better somewhere else. But I know in the UK, it just isn't supported that well. It really isn't. And the same issue goes for Garmin Music. This is another area where it works really well but they need to improve some aspects of it. Um, now, this was music, I would say, was the, mo the the main feature that I wanted to get in the 945. It is the main reason I upgraded from the 935. Yeah, the, the metrics are good, the screen's a little bit better, and, you know, it's a new device and all that, but I didn't go out and spend all that money just to get a couple of extra metrics. The music is one of the most important things for me because... Since I've bought the Garmin 945, I've been able to leave my phone at home. And I know some people will still take their phones so they can call people, you know, security and all that kind of thing. But for me, I don't mind leaving my phone at home. I don't mind. Being able to run without my phone is great. It means I don't have it in a strap or I don't, you know, when I'm wearing a jacket, I don't have it in my pocket bobbling up and down. I can just run with the watch. And in that regard, it's fantastic. It's amazing. I love it. I love the way that the music works, but it's not perfect. You know, there's there's no, for example, graphic equalizer. You can't, you know, I found that some tracks were quite bassy and others weren't. Um, it's quite limited the way that it works. I've put on a couple of dance, uh, Daft Punk albums, and I put a few other albums on, and it's pretty good. You know, you just hold it in there, and you can see there it says, now playing um, album Alive 2007. You just push a button and if it's not connected already, it'll ask you to sync to your Bluetooth device and it works really well. It's fantastic and um, and I love it. But, okay, why is it why is it bad? Well, at the moment, only Deezer and Spotify are supported. There's no support for YouTube music. Uh, there's no support for um, Apple Music or any other music application. It's Deezer and Spotify. Now, I've actually got Deezer because my friend lets me use a sub account. He's got a family account with five sub accounts, but, um, and you can see it there, Deezer. But um, I can't connect Deezer to this because 
it connects to his account and there's no support for sub accounts. So the support for like an individual account but not sub accounts. So if you've got a family account for your dad, your brother, sister, kids or whatever, it goes to the main account. So again, this is something they should be able to sort. They just haven't sorted it yet. They've not sorted it. Um, now, as far as managing music, I did try the downloading music when I did connect to my friend's account in Deezer. I downloaded albums. Works r really, really well. It, it, it's fantastic the way that you can just go into Spotify or Deezer and just download your playlist, download your albums onto your watch. It's fantastic. If you don't support any of those, if you don't, you know, if you don't have a Deezer account, you don't have a Spotify account, um, or like me, you have one of the sub accounts, like a family account, then you can't do that. But you can use the Garmin application, the, the, the desktop application, to just simply transfer music over. And I did it that way. It's not as user friendly. It's not as good. I would love to go on here and just, you know, pick an album, download it onto my watch. And that's ideally what I want to do. Um, and hopefully they add support for sub accounts later. But it's, it's not a deal breaker for me. Using the, um, the application on Windows, it's not that difficult. It takes about two seconds to transfer an album over. Very quick, very easy to use. Uh, as I said, you know, it, there's just a few areas I think they, 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 they need to improve upon. It's the same complaint as uh, Garmin Pay. With Garmin Pay, they just don't have enough banks that support it. And it's the same with Garmin Music. They need to add support for Apple Music. A lot of people use... Uh, Apple iPhones, a lot of people use Apple Music, a lot of people are using YouTube Music and, you know, there's many other apps out there as well. They need to add support for these things. And when they're selling a watch that's £500, there really is no excuse for having lots of banks supporting Garmin P and lots of uh, music applications being supported here. They can't just offer one or two. They really do need to step that side up, uh, up especially when they're charging so much for this. But, as I said, if you're willing to go onto your desktop and just transfer music then you can transfer all your music onto this. And it's not going to match the audio quality you'll get from a dedicated MP3 player or, or maybe even from your phone. But I just love the simplicity of it. That You know, just push the button, put on some uh, Bluetooth headphones and I'm good to go. So for me, it's a fantastic feature. Now, bigger question comes out now. Is it worth, you know, paying the extra to get the 945? Well, this is, is is a tougher question, and I would probably say that if you have a 935, if the battery life is, you know, it's not too bad, if you're happy with it, I would say that for most people, it really isn't worth upgrading. Now, this isn't a blanket statement, it's not a, everyone shouldn't upgrade or anything like that. I think it does depend. I think that if you can sell your 935 and get a fairly decent price and then you're willing to pay you know the extra 200 or so to get this then you're going to get those extra metrics you're going to get the music functionality etc but there is a good argument as well that for the money that you'd pay to get that watch and you know the inconvenience of selling it you could save yourself 200 250 pounds or 300 whatever the difference is from the, the price of this new and the price of selling the 935 you could just go out and get one of the best pair of sport headphones out there that's got an MP3 player built in that stores the music, you know, in the band. Uh, and I think there is a good argument for that. Certainly, from my point of view, looking back, maybe I should have did that. Maybe I should have just got a really good pair of MP3 headphones and then I wouldn't have to have worried about controlling it via my watch. But, um, you know, it, it's difficult for me to see whether you should upgrade or whether you shouldn't upgrade. You know, if you've got an A35, this really just is an evolution. And day to day, you don't notice these extra features. You know, if you've not run for a week, you're not going to notice anything different. It's the same watch. It looks identical to the 935. It is a 935. Let's be honest. This is a 935 that's got a few extra metrics. It's got support for Garmin P, one or two banks, eh, or five banks, whatever it is in the UK. But it's also got support for Garmin Music. But I mean, day to day, you don't notice that. It's just a 935 on your wrist. I don't notice this being a different watch. So, I would say that if you want the best Garmin watch out there, you're looking at the Garmin 945 or the Phoenix 5 Plus. If you're looking for the best watch for running, yeah, this is still one of the watches you should be looking at, but you should also consider the 245 and the 645, 245 Music and 645 Music as well. Those additions support music. But if you're coming from the 935, I think this is where you know, the decision is maybe a little bit harder because you're upgrading from a, a watch that's already fantastic and you're paying a lot of extra money 
for just a few extra features. If you want an MP3 player in your watch, if you love the idea of that and you don't want an MP3 player, you know, running with one or running with your phone or you don't want to buy headphones that has MP3, uh, that has MP3 functionality built in, it doesn't have the music stored in, in the actual headphones, then I would say the Garmin 945 is worth looking at. But it's one of these things, you know, I think that whenever you're, whenever you're looking at buying new tech, you're spending a lot of money to get a little bit of extra functionality. You're spending a huge amount of money, you're getting a few extra features, but it becomes harder to justify it when you already have something that does 95% of what this does. And that's what the 935 does. It does most of what this does. This has just got a little bit of a slightly clearer screen um, and it's got support for Gamma Music. Uh, you know, the additional metrics are good. I'm not going to lie to you, they are good. Uh, and the GPS is slightly better but as I said the 935 wasn't uh, bad so um, yeah guys I hope I've helped with your decision I think I think the decision is harder for anyone like me that was coming from the 935 and I think you're coming from the 935 it is a splurge you are kind of spoiling yourself a little bit upgrading but if you're looking for the best Garmin watch and I was and you know I, I don't drink anymore I run I, I train most days and I like to see the information that it gives me I like to see how I'm doing with my runs. I like to see all the metrics and the way the way that I was looking at it as well, yes, I'm paying a few hundred pounds and it is a lot of money, but I use it every day. It's on my wrist every day. It gives me all this extra information and the way that I was looking at it, you know, if, if, I, if I use this for the next two years, then I was kind of breaking up and, you know, it's an extra 10 pounds a month for two years or something like that. You know, that's kind of the way I sold it to myself. Um, but have a look at the other Garmin watches. As I said, guys, go into a shop, have a look at the other Garmin watches that are there and check out ones from other brands like Suunto and all that as well and just see what's what's right for you. I'm not, you know, doing these videos to say this is the best watch, definitely buy it. There's there's other good watches out there. And if if you don't care too much about the sports functionality, maybe you are better getting a Samsung Gear watch or a, you know, even the Garmin Vivo Vivo Active series. Maybe maybe you want to check out one of those as well. And if you're just running, maybe you don't need all these additional activities like cycling and swimming and all that to be tracked. Thanks for watching, guys. I know there's probably going to be a lot of things that I've maybe not covered in this because with a watch like this, there's so many different things that it can do. It's just impossible to cover it all in one video. But if you've got any questions about anything I didn't cover or anything I did cover, please do leave a comment below. Uh, I'll do my best to answer it. I've not tried every single activity on this watch. I've not tried every single feature. I use this in a very selective way, but I think most people do. You buy the watch for something that works for you, whether it be running or cycling or whatever. This does everything that I need and I love it. I absolutely love it. It's the best watch I've ever had, which has replaced the other best watch I've ever had. Um, but yes, if you're looking for a fantastic running watch, I can highly recommend the 945 guys. But as always, do your re research, uh, look around at alternatives just to make sure that you, you make an informed decision because it is an expensive watch. You know, you're talking about £500 or so. A little bit cheaper if you, uh, if you import it. But yeah, it's an expensive watch. But... I won't lie to you guys, this is, a, this is a fantastic watch. Hopefully Garmin will improve it in some areas. I do think they can improve the music and, and Garmin Pay functionality. There's no reason why they can't because, you know, the actual technology is in the watch already. They just have to improve the, the firmware side, the, the software side of it. Um, that's an area they have to improve upon and hopefully they do. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, as I said, please do leave a comment below if you've got any questions about this. Um, I do appreciate everyone who's been watching and commenting. So until next time, take care.